All right, let's do a relatively complex multi-factor problem. Uh, if you understand your factors at this point, this problem shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, the way I'm going to approach this problem is to use the factors and go relatively quickly. So uh, my suggestion is before you watch the video, look at the question that's listed right here and uh, see if you understand how to do it first and then go through the video and kind of confirm that you know how to do the problem rather than just watch me go through and get confused. Okay. Um, let's read the problem. Uh, Spencer's parents decide to set up a college fund. Uh, we've kind of already seen this problem, but it's a little bit more difficult this time. Uh, they open the account with $7,500, and then they're going to make regular payments of $9,000 per year for the first five years. In year four, this is the trick here, in year four they have to withdraw $2,500 from the account to pay for some home repairs. Their question is, how much must they deposit at the end of each year for the remaining five years to accumulate the 65000 they need for Spencer's education. And we have, again, we have an APR of 9% compounded yearly. Rather than write our knowns and unknowns, because we have so many and we have so many uh, components to this problem, I'm going to draw out the cash flow diagram. All right? And uh, I think that will be the, probably the best way to follow through this problem. So let's start out with our time axis here. At time zero, we're going to make our initial investment of $7,500. Okay. And then for the first five years, so year one, two, three, four, and five, we're going to make an initial investment of A1 equaling $9,000. Okay. Let's label that zero, one, two, three, four, and five. From year six to year 10, we're going to make a different series of investments, and we don't know what those are yet. Four and five. I'm going to redraw this axis here. Okay, and so this is year six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, and we need a future sum of money of sixty-five thousand dollars. Remember, also in year four, we're going to be making this withdrawal of $25,000 to pay for the home repairs. And the point of view here is Spencer's parents, right? Um, we ha Remember, we have an I of 9% APR. So let's go through this problem. Uh, let's look first at the cash flow diagram and talk through it. What we need to do here is we're going to try to convert everything to future value. Uh, and set everything equal to $65,000 and find out what our A2 is. We don't know A2. Okay. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take our $7,500 and what we're going to tr try to figure out is how much, what chunk of the $6,500 is taken out just from investing the $7,500 in year zero. Remember in the beginning of the account this, this $7,500 is going to earn interest for the 10 year period so we need to make sure we account for that. The next set of investments that we make are from uh, year zero to year, the end of year five, where we're going to be investing $9,000 every year. We need to figure out how much that accumulates by year five and then convert that total amount that we've accumulated in year five to uh, a future value in year 10 because between year five and year 10, that, a, that series A1 is going to be gather, gaining more interest at 9% a year. Uh, we also need to account for this $25,000 that we're removing in year four. Okay, what essentially is happening is we're taking that $25,000 out and we would have been earning interest on that. So we need to subtract not only the $25,000, but the $25,000 and any interest that $25,000 would have made. Finally, we need to account for this A2, the investments that occur uh, year six through year 10 that we don't know that we're solving for. Okay, so the way I'm gonna set this problem up is $65,000 is what we need in the future. And we're going to convert all of these investments and withdrawals into future value. Okay, So we have the $7,500. And remember, we need to convert that 10 years in the future. So we start in year zero, and we need to carry that 10 years in the future. What that means is we need to use the factor F slash P, 9%, uh, and we're carrying that forward 10 years. What that means is I'm finding the future value of that $7,500 that we invested in time zero. We're going to add that to the $9,000 that we invest every month. 
okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna find the future value of that series of investments at 9% for the five year period that that series occurs in. We're then going to multiply this value by the F slash P factor at 9% and we're gonna carry that five years. What we're effectively doing here is we are accumulating the money from your zero to, from the, the series of investments in year one, two, three, four, and five, okay? That's what we've done in this first part here, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that sum that's accumulated and accumulate that even more for the next five years where it's gonna be earning 9% interest and sitting in that account, okay? What we need to do now then is we need to subtract the $25,000 that we would have been earning interest on and multiply that by the uh, F slash P factor, okay? The F slash P factor and at 9%, and that would have been earning interest for six years, so our period is six years. Remember, we withdraw in four years, and we're trying to convert all these values to future values in year 10. So there are six years that that would have been earning interest that it no longer is. All right? And then finally we have to add this A2, whatever that is, uh, and we're going to convert that by saying, by using the F slash A factor at 9%, and that series occurs for five years. Note that we don't have to convert it any further because that series ends at the time period when we want to withdraw for Spencer's college education. Okay, so let's add in the factors here. We have $65,000, our initial investment of 7,500. We need to go to our interest tables. We need to go to the 9% table and find the F slash P factor for 10 years. So let's go down to the 9% table. Oop, let me go up. There it is. Uh, zoom out a little bit. Okay, we need to go down 10 years, and what we need is the F slash P factor in 10 years. That's 2.367. Let's write that in. 2.367. And we're going to add that to, remember, our 9,000 multiplied the, by the F slash A factor for 5 years. So the F slash A factor for 5 years is 5.985. All right, and then we're going to multiply that by the F slash P factor. We're going to carry that sum for three more year, or for five more years. So we need F slash P for five years. So F slash P at five years, 1.539. 1.539. I'm going to subtract our 25,000 and the interest it would have earned. So F slash P, nine and six. So we need to go F slash P. 9 and 6, so that's going to be 1.677. And then finally, we're going to add A2 multiplied by the F slash A factor, 9% and 5. So the F slash A uh, factor, 9% and 5. That's 5.985 again. So 5.985. If we scroll down and we solve for A2 in this equation, which is relatively easy, we know we have $1,048.33. That means as we tell Spencer's parents that if this situation occurs where they have this cash flow diagram here, where they have the withdrawal and they're depositing and opening the account with a certain amount, that in year six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, they need to make an investment of $1,048.33 to have the exact value of 65,000 for Spencer's education.